All right, so like I said, chapter five, I mean, chapter nine is actually, it's, it's conic. So we're eventually going to get from circles, parabolas, ellipses, and hyperbolas. You'll do those four things. Today's section is circles and parabolas. These are both things that you have done. Circles we've actually, and parabolas we've done this year and also in algebra two. You will see they're a little different than when we did them the first time, the parabolas. Like we did quadratic functions. So you had f of x equals a x squared plus bx plus c. These are all going to be in standard form, so they're a little bit different, okay? So conics are basically, or a conic section, um, is the intersection of a plane and a double napped cone. So these are cones. They look almost like, um, like an hourglass, if you picture an hourglass. If you were to take a plane or like a rectangle, like if you think about a piece of paper sliding through these things, if you slide it through at the perfect horizontal, it makes the circle. If you slide it through at a diagonal, it makes an oval shape, which is called an ellipse. If you were to just like cut off an edge of it, like a little slice of a little corner, it makes a parabola. And if you slide it vertically through your double nap cone, it actually makes a hyperbola. So that's where all of these shapes come from. And eventually you'll get through all four of those. Again, today we are starting with the circle and the parabolas, and then we'll go ellipse and then we'll go hyperbola. So a circle is the collection of all points, X and Y, that are equidistant from a fixed point. The standard equation for a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where h, k is the center and r is the radius. So it's been a little while since we did circles, but we have done circles. And this formula is always the same. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So you'll either get given information about a circle and ask for the equation, or you'll be given the equation and asked to find stuff out about the circle. You'll do both. And it, that's the same for all the conics. It's going to work both ways. So example one says a point one, four is on a circle whose center is at negative two. Negative three is shown in the figure. Write the standard form of the equation of the circle. So first of all, I would start by writing out your standard form and you want to do these until you know them so very well because obviously there's a lot of formulas if there's four conics and then there's equations within there. So when we write this, we replace the H, we replace the K, and we replace the R. So we need three things for a circle. What of those do you already have? I have the center h, k. So h is negative 2 and k is negative 3. So x minus a negative 2 actually becomes x plus 2. Squared plus y minus a negative 3 becomes y plus 3 squared equals. What I don't know yet is the r squared. What is one way I could find it? Good. And that's what I would recommend is take your h, k, and they give you the x and y and plug it in. So I would get 1 plus 2 squared plus 4 minus a negative 3 plus 3 squared equals r squared. 3 squared plus 7 squared equals r squared. 9 plus 49 equals r squared. r squared would be 58. Now, if it had asked for the radius and the equation, I would have to square root that 58 and simplify it. But because it's just asking for the equation, I don't need to simplify that, I can actually just plug it in. So x plus 2 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 58. And there's the standard form of this circle. You would square root and simplify it if you can, yeah. All right, so what is another way to do that? I would totally recommend what you just did. So that, that's what I would say is the best option. But what is another option to doing that? I can use the distance formula from the center to the point on it. That's going to give me my radius. I then just have to square it. The distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So that would give you the length of the radius. When you plug it into the equation, however, you would have to then square it. All right, example two is putting an equation into standard form. So now I've got an equation, but it's not in standard form. 
It says sketch the circle given by the equation and identify its center and its radius. So I've got this equation I need to get into standard form. Do you remember how to get it into standard form? Do you remember the words complete the square? Yes. Not just once, folks, but twice. So we're going to group together your x's and your y's, okay, and bump the other term to the other side. So we're going to bump the constant to the other side. So we do x squared minus 6x, leave the space because we're going to fill it in, plus y squared minus 2y, leave the space, and then 6 goes to the other side, becomes negative 6. So step one to complete the square, it was group it. Step two to complete the square is make sure there's not something attached to either of the squared terms. So if there was something attached to the x squared, I'd have to take it out of that parentheses if there was something attached to the y squared, even if it's just a negative. You have to take it out of those parentheses, okay? There's a lot of complete the square in your near future. So if it's a skill you hated or you don't remember, it's a good idea to make sure you do some extra practice. Step three is take the b term, which is the second term in each, divide it by two and square it, and that's what's going into the empty space. So if I take six and I don't care about the sign because I'm going to square it, I'm going to divide it by 2 and then square it. I end up with 3 squared, and that's 9. So I add the 9 here. Whatever you do to the left side of your equation, you have to do to the right side of the equation. So we're also going to add the 9 to the other side. I do the same thing with the 2. And again, I ignore the sign because it's going to get squared, so it doesn't matter. 2 divided by 2 squared would be 1 squared, which is 1. Add it here. Add it here. Then the whole goal there was to make these perfect squares so that you can then factor them. I square root the first term. I square root the third term. I take the sign from the middle term. I'll put it in the parentheses and square it. Wait, how did you do square root the first term, square root the last term, and then take the sign from the middle. I'm going to do the same thing with the second one. Square root the first term, square root the last term, take the sign from the middle, put it in the parentheses and square it. And then negative 6 plus 9 is 3 plus 1 is 4. And there's the standard form of my circle. That's how you factor a perfect square to them. Oh, these numbers? That's complete the square. So you take the middle term, you divide it by 2, oh. and then square it. Okay. Yep. So now that's the standard form of the equation, but the question said actually sketch the circle given by the equation, identify its center and its radius. So I've got it to the point in which we can do these things, but we haven't answered either of those questions yet. First of all, I would find the radius and the and the center before I sketch it. The radius is the opposite of what follows x, so this would be a positive 3. Opposite of what follows y, that's a positive 1. And the radius is the square root of what's over on the side by itself, which means the radius is 2. Technically, that should be plus and minus 2, because when we square root both sides, but you're talking about a radius, a radius is always positive because it's, it's length, it's distance, okay? All right, then I'm going to pull in a graph. I'm going to plot the center, which is that 3, 1. And I go to the right 2, I go up 2, I go left 2, and I go down 2, and I just connect my circle. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Example 3 says find the x and y intercepts. Do we remember how to find the x intercept? Plug 0 in for y. And the y-intercept. Plug 0 in for x. So the first one, I'm going to do x-intercepts. x minus 4 squared. 
plus 0 minus 2 squared equals 16x minus 4 squared plus negative 2 squared, which is 4, equals 16. Subtract the 4. x minus 4 squared equals 12. And now we've got to use the even root property, right? Because if I square root both sides of these, this equation, what do I have to remember to do? What do you do when you square root both sides? Plus and minus. So x minus 4 equals plus and minus the square root of 12. That's 2 and 6, 2 and 3. So this is x minus 4 equals plus and minus 2 root 3. And then just add the 4. So you can leave it as 4 plus and minus 2 root 3. Or you can rewrite that as 4 minus 2 root 3 and 4 plus 2 root 3. If I was going to graph these, I would approximate from the root 12. Like I would try to approximate up here. This is going to be like a 3.5 and I would go from there if you had to use it to graph them. All right, those are x-intercepts. Then I go back to do the y-intercepts. This time I make zero, or I plug zero in for x. Subtract the 16. y minus 2 squared equals zero. Square root, there's no such thing as plus or minus zero, so I get y minus two equals the square root of zero, which is zero, and then add the two. Oh, and you'll write these in coordinate point form. So this is four plus and minus two root three comma zero, and zero comma two. So with a circle, sometimes you have two x-intercepts, two y-intercepts. Sometimes you have one y-intercept and two x-intercepts, one x-intercept, two y-intercepts. Sometimes there are neither because if it's like a circle that's floating in the, one of the quadrants and it's not actually touching an axis, you might not even have an x-intercept or a y-intercept. And those would come about like when you went to square root it, you'd end up trying to square root a negative number. That's how you would know that there's no intercept. Questions on those? All right, second conic is called a hyper, I mean a parabola. Again, we have done a lot with parabolas. It's been like since chapter two, since we did quadratics, but these are gonna be in different formats. So by definition, a parabola is the set of all the points in a plane that are equidistant from a fixed line called a directrix. So when we did parabolas the first time in the beginning of the school year, we didn't talk about a directrix. We had an axis of symmetry, we had the vertex and that kind of stuff. Now we're going to include something called a directrix. A directrix is a line that runs on the outside of a parabola. So the parabola cannot pass through the directrix. It goes in the opposite directions. So these obviously would be arrows, okay? Those curves are going to continue on forever in that direction. They'll never cross through the directrix. So if my parabola points up or down, the directrix is going to be a horizontal line. If my parabola points right or left, right or left, then your directrix is going to be a vertical line. So these are either x equals or y equals lines. Okay. The um, focus is a fixed point that is not on the line. The focus falls inside the scoop of the parabola. So the focus, if like I always think, the parabola folds around the focus. Okay. So it points away from the directrix and it folds around the focus. The distance from the directrix to the focus, and I mean, sorry, the distance from the vertex of the focus and the vertex of the directrix is the same. So if there are two spaces in between the vertex and the focus, there will be two spaces in between the vertex and the directrix. So the distance there is the same. The midpoint of the focus and the directrix is called the vertex. That's the point we've actually used before. And then there's a line passing through the vertex that's called the axis of symmetry. So that's what this line is. That would be my axis of symmetry. 
Axis of symmetry and directrix are always perpendicular. One's going to be vertical, one's going to be horizontal. Okay, the standard form or the standard equation of a parabola, and there are two sets, and the difference is which, what's your vertex. So I'm actually going to stop, start at the bottom one. If my vertex is at 0, 0, then the equations are either x squared equals 4py, and p can't be 0 because then you'd eliminate your variable. And this would be for a, um, a parabola that points up or down. So these are the ones we've already done this year. Our x is squared. These point up and down. If it's a positive 4p, it points up. If it's a negative 4p, it points down. The second standard is, is standard equation is y squared equals 4px. And this is if it points to the right or if it points to the left. So if the y is squared, we're pointing left and right. If it's a positive 4p, it points to the right. If it's a negative 4p, it points to the left. The p is the distance from the vertex of the directrix and the vertex to the, to the focus. So if I go to graph a parabola, and it's here, okay, and I have my focus here, and I have my directrix the same distance away here, this distance, which in this case is 2, is your p-value. And it would be the same. It's going to be the same from the vertex to the focus and the vertex to the directrix. If it's turned sideways, it would also still be the same distance. So that p-value is from vertex to directrix or vertex to focus. Now what happens if my vertex is not at zero, zero, and that's what these are, okay? So if my vertex shifts off of zero, then I just add the h to be where the, the x is and I add the k to be what the y is. So if it is a parabola that, again, this would be opens up or down, my x is squared, so it's x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k. Same rule applies, positive 4p opens up, negative 4p opens down. And then if it is y plus k squared, now I know this opens right and left if the y is squared right and left, okay? And again, the k always goes with the y and the h always goes with the x. Same as for a circle, okay? Those are the same, like the center uses the same letters as the vertex. So just like we did with the, the circles, you're going to get these in which you have an equation and you have to pull information out of it, possibly graph it, or you're going to get information about your parabolas and you're going to have to give me the equation. So it's going to flip-flop both ways. So this, now we have five formulas, right? You've got the circle. I mean, they're the same, but you have the circle and then you have two for the parabola if it's got a zero, if it has a zero, zero vertex, and you have two for a parabola if it doesn't. These are the same things. It's just that if I had a zero and a zero here, I don't need those, so that's that. But these are the same. So if you want to just memorize this and then just realize if the vertex is zero, zero, the H and the K go away, it's the same thing, okay? So don't like start freaking out about the number of formulas. It's the same thing. All right, so this is just a kind of visual of what happens if it's up, down, right, left, okay? For the parabolas that, that face up and down, okay, you obviously have your vertex. That one's not at zero, zero. That's my HK. This distance from zero or some, from the vertex to the focus is the same as the distance from the vertex to the directrix. That's your P-value, okay? And if it's a po this would be if it was a positive 4P. This would have to be positive. If it's now negative, it flips upside down. Everything else is still the same. Vertex, distance from the vertex of the focus is your p-value. Distance from the vertex of the directrix is your p-value the other direction, okay? If it's turned sideways, notice that now my y is squared. Still the same though, distance from vertex to the focus is your p-value. 
distance from the vertex to the directrix is the value, same thing. And this would be if it's a positive 4p. If it's negative, so it's turned left, vertex is still in the middle. Distance from the vertex to the focus is that p-value. Distance from the vertex to the directrix is still that p-value. So difference is what variable is squared is always the first thing I look for. And then is my 4p positive or negative? And that determines which way you're going to point it. All right, example four. Find the standard form of the equation with the of the parabola given, and this is different information. So again, first thing I'm going to do is write out the two equations. x minus h squared equals 4py minus k, and y minus k squared equals 4px minus h. I would write it until you know it so well you don't even have to flinch. So A says vertex is at the origin. What does that mean? Good. HK is 0, 0. And, sorry. So you don't, you can just use this one. Well, we haven't figured out if it's up, up, up or down yet. But whichever one we do choose, we don't need the H and K for. Okay, second part says focus is 0, 4. So I graph it every single time. I don't think, I don't mean you have to pull in a coordinate grid. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm a visual person. I need to see it to know what kind of equation I'm talking about. So I literally would draw this. I would plot my vertex at zero, zero. And a focus at zero, four means I'm going up one, two, three, four spots. That's my focus. From those two pieces of information, I should be able to determine what way this is pointing, which is what? Up. Remember the parabola folds around the focus. So if it's pointing up, which variable is squared? X is squared. And is my 4P positive or negative? It's positive. So now I have the X squared equals 4PY equation because my vertex is at 0, 0. It's pointing up to the X is squared and it's going to be a positive 4P. If it points up or down, it's an X squared. If it's right or left, it's a y squared. Sure. There's a million different ways to look at it. Like whatever makes sense to you. So then the p value is the distance from my vertex to the focus. So 1, 2, 3, 4. p is 4. So this becomes x squared equals 4 times 4 times y or x squared equals 16y. And that's the standard form of your equation. B, the vertex at the origin and the focus at 1, 0. So again, vertex is 0, 0. This time my focus is 1, 0, which means it's on the x-axis. Which way is this parabola pointing? To the right. What's that tell you about the variable? Y is squared and positive or negative 4P? Positive 4P. What is P? 1. So this is a y squared equals 4px. y squared would equal 4 times 1 times x. y squared equals 4x. All right, example five, find the standard form of the equation of a parabola with a vertex one, three, and a focus one, five. So what's the first thing that you notice is different this time? The vertex is now one, three. So I'm going to plot one, three to the right one, up three. There's my vertex. And then my focus one, five. So to the right one, one, two, three, four, five. That's my focus. Which direction is this going? Up, which tells you? X is squared and positive 4P. The difference is I have HK this time. So it's X minus H squared equals 4PY minus K. Mm -hmm. Because the vertex was on the origin last time. Yeah. So this is my X minus 1 squared because that's my H. 
four, I need the p-value. What's the distance between my vertex and the focus? Good. Y minus my k is three. And I get x minus one squared equals eight y minus three. Yep. All right, now I've got an equation, right? Obviously there's only one variable squared. That's how I could tell the difference between a parabola and a, a circle. But this is not in standard form, this is in quadratic form. I gotta get it in a standard form. How do we get it in a standard form? What do we do with the circles? We completed the square, we're gonna do it again for the parabolas, okay? So there's a couple of things that you can do with this that helps a little bit. One is I can get rid of the fractions from the get-go and I can make them all whole numbers. I'd have to deal with the two being on the Y later, but you could totally do that. The other thing is that you can work with it. So I'm gonna kind of show you both ways because you could do it both ways. The difference is there's only one variable that's squared this time. So I only have to complete the square for the X in this case. If it was the Y that's squared, then I would do, uh, then I'd do it with the Y. This is completely not set up the way we normally set it up. I need to get this to be an x minus h squared equals 4py minus k. That's how I get it into standard form at the end. I know it's the x because the x is squared. So I can multiply everything, and I would even say negative 2 because it's a pain if that's a negative x squared. We have to take that out too. So I'd multiply everything by negative 2. So this becomes negative 2y equals x squared plus 2x minus 1. Because you're going to want the, the squared term. You don't want anything in front of it. Otherwise, you have to factor it out of the parentheses. So you didn't have to do that. You could take out a negative 1 half when you get to that step. It just gets yucky. Okay, so if I complete the square, I need the x squared and the x to be on that side, but I want everything else to be on the other side, which means I'm going to move this 1 to come over here with the negative 2y. Now I've got to find my third term here. So if there was something attached to that x squared, I would have to take it out, but we got rid of it from the beginning. So we don't have to do that. I take the two, I divide it by two, and I square it. That's one squared, which is one. I add it here, and I add it to the other side. I gotta balance out that equation. If it's on the same side, we subtract, but because we're doing it to the left and right side of the equal sign, you do the same. Yeah, so when we did it with quadratic, we kept everything on the same side. We kept the y by itself. That's why this is different. So you're adding it to both sides. So I have negative 2y plus 2 equals, I square root the first term, I square root the last term, I take the sign from the middle, put it in parentheses and square it. Now if you've started to train yourself to see the squared terms on the left of your equations, feel free to switch that. x plus 1 squared equals negative 2y plus 2. I'm almost there. But there can be nothing attached to the y, which means I have to take off the negative 2. When I take it out of here, I also have to take it out of here, so this becomes y minus 1. Now I'm in standard form. So there can be nothing on the front of the x squared term, and there can be nothing attached to the y on the right-hand side because that, that affects your, your vertex. So now it's in standard form. It says find the vertex, the focus, and the directrix. Vertex, focus, directrix. So the vertex is the easy part, right? Opposite what follows x, so negative 1. Opposite what follows y, so positive 1. So I would plot. So I get a visual, negative 1, positive 1, that's my vertex. Which direction is this parabola going? So close. Good. 
it's down because it's negative. So it's up or down, it's vertical, but it's down because that's a negative 4P. So that, that's what my problem would look like loosely. In order to find the focus, I need to know what P is. So if negative 2 equals 4P, you get to choose if you keep that negative. Honestly, the negative just tells you what directions it's going. So you could also just do 2 equals 4P and then solve for P, which is a half. The sign only matters which direction you're going, but the value is what I now have to adjust. So 2, the, now think about what's happening. I'm going up and down which means if I were going to shift down a half, that would be my focus, and up a half, that would be my directrix. Yep. So for the actual, to see how many units you move, you don't have to solve, you just look at what you're doing in the movement. Like, you have to solve that until you get P. Well, you have to find P to fix, you mean to set it up? Yeah. Yeah. Two units, like above and below. A half a unit. That has to be exact, right? So 4P is negative 2. You have to then find from that what the P value is, which is a half. So you're going up a half, you're going down a half, which means the X value on your focus is going to be the same as your vertex because we're going up and down. So my focus, the X is staying negative 1 because it didn't move left or right, but it came down from our positive 1. So 1 minus a half means that my vertical coordinate or the y coordinate of my focus is going to be at one half and then the directrix you go up a half so we take the one and we add the half to it and my coordinate point there is one and a half or three halves you could do either one but this is a line directrix specifically a horizontal line which means it's a y equals and it would be y equals one and a half or y equals three halves So it wanted the vertex. Did I write that out? No, I didn't. The vertex. Oh, I did. Negative one, one. The focus, negative one and one half. And the directrix, which is y equals three halves. I don't think it asked for it, but if it asked for the axis of symmetry, it would be an x equals, and it's the x equals the h because it's a vertical line that would run through the vertex. So directrix and axis of symmetry are always going to be opposite letters. It's it the the p value is the vertex to the directrix and the vertex to the focus. So you go up whatever p is and down whatever p is or right and left if you're turned sideways. Yeah. You have to go up p value in here. I have to figure out which way my parabola is facing because that determines if the directrix is above or below it or right or left of it. And then you go up and down the p value to get that. Yeah. Correct. Like this part, you mean? This and this? Yeah. So whatever I add to the right, I have to add to the left. You mean what happens if it didn't factor out here? Like when you take it out? No, I was just asking like, oh. to balance it out. Yeah, right. whatever you add to one side, you have to add to the other. Okay. Yeah. When we did this the first time with quadratic and we were completing the square, we kept the y by itself all the time because it was always vertical. And so we added inside the parentheses and subtracted outside the parentheses. We changed only one side. With these, we're changing both sides. So you want to add and add. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we're going to do it again. So find... All right, it says find the vertex, the focus, and directrix of the parabola. What's different with this one than the last one? The y is squared now, right? So now I'm going to complete the square for the y, but then I know because my y is squared, this is pointing right or left. I don't know which direction yet because I haven't completed the square to put it in, in standard form, but I do know at least that's, that's true. It's going to be facing right or left. So I'm going to group together the one that's squared and the, and the variable that matches it, and I'm going to bump the one to the other side, the other one to the other side. So I end up with y squared minus 8y. I'm going to leave this space to fill it in. And this would be negative 4x minus 12. So the positive 4x goes to the other side, changes its sign. I take the 8. 
Divide it by two, it's four. Square it, and it's 16. I add 16 here, and I add 16 here. On the left-hand side, I want to factor it. Square root the first term, square root the last term, take the sign from the middle, put it in parentheses, and square it. And it's equal to negative 4x plus 4. So negative 12 plus 16 is 4. Now what? Negative. I got to take this. These cannot stay attached. I got to take it out. So I get y minus 4 squared equals negative 4x minus 1. So divide both of them by negative 4. Factoring out the greatest common factor. And now it's standard form. So tell me what you know about this parabola. Vertex is what? Switch it. Always x first. One, four. What does it look like? It's negative. So it's because it's a y squared, it's right or left. Because it's a negative 4p, it's left. The 4p is negative 4. Again, you can just make it 4 equals 4p because we use the direction of our parabola to tell us what to do with that p. So that's where I think people get confused. They make it negative. Do you add it or subtract it? Use the picture to do that, right? Once you get a visual of what this looks like, I know from my vertex, I'm going to go left 1, and that's the focus, and I'm going to go the right 1, and that's the directrix. Because it doesn't matter. P is not, P is distance and not direction. The sign on it tells you which way to point your parabola, right? But to actually find the values of your focus and your directrix, you don't need the signs. You just need to know what direction you're going. So because I went left one on my, um, on my graph, that means my X changed, right? So the focus became zero, four. The Y doesn't change, the X changes. And the directrix, I went right one. It's a vertical line, so this is an x equals, and to the right of four would be five. Sorry, to the right of one would be two. You're changing the x. My axis of symmetry is now a horizontal line. So it's a y equals the y coordinate of your vertex, which is four. No, directrix is a line. So the vertex and the focus are coordinate points. The directrix and the axis are lines. Yep. You have to factor that way because the x and the y stand right there. So I can't have positive. Correct. They can't be negative and they can't have a leading coefficient. So like whatever's in those parentheses, this can't have anything attached to it. That can't have anything attached to it. This can't even have anything out front. You would move it to this side. Because that changes your vertex. Right. Questions? So the directrix is always the same distance away from the vertex as the focus is. It's just, well, in this case, it's one because P was one. But it's a line. So it's, and it's always going to, like, run outside of it. So if my parabola, let's just say, like, my parabola opened upwards, right? The focus is going to be inside it. And the directrix is now a horizontal line, which means it's a Y equals. And it's the same distance away. So if this was, if P is one here... You go up one to get your focus, and you would go down one to get your directrix. If it's turned to the right, let's say it's here, here, right? Now my parabola goes this way. If my, let's say P is three, you're going to count one, two, three. That's your focus. You're going to count one, two, three, and run the line. This one would be vertical. So whatever the distance is, whatever P is, is the distance from vertex to focus and vertex to directrix. You just got to count it out. And like there are people that can do this stuff in their head. I draw it out every single time because that's when silly mistakes get made, like trying to figure out what direction to go all in your head. Daniel, did you have another, did you have a question? Yeah. 